Hey guys, Adam Rose, Vice President, Senior Loan Officer of Western Ohio Mortgage here in Sydney, Ohio. Today is another episode of the Mortgage Guy podcast, and today we're going to learn about some cost-cutting measures and what else is going on out there in the market that's costing us a little bit more money to obtain a mortgage. Let's dive in uh, to uh, temporary buy downs. All right, we, we talked about this before, and we are going to move this off of me, so you don't have to watch me the whole time. And we're going to move you to some examples and some articles we found about what's going on in the market. So let's go into uh, the two one buy down. So what is a two one buy down? So what it is, and, and people have heard of of discount points and buying down the rate to save money. Uh, this is a temporary buy down. All right, so temporary in nature. Uh, so a two one means, hey. The first year, we're 2% less than what the market is today. The second year, we're 1% less than what the market is today. So let's go into that. So a temporary buy-down is going to be funded by the seller. So the keys here are, uh, and, and you can do it in multiple products, okay? So you can do government lending and you can do conventional financing. Conventional is going to be the most common, of course, that we're going to run into with a, a, a temporary buy-down. Um, but uh, again, we're going to try to get the seller to cover it. And uh, you as the buyer, you may want to entertain making sure that you have your funds for closing in regards to your down payment, your closing cost expense, in order to ask for this contribution from the seller to do this 2-1 buy down. But I want to give you a quick example to show you what kind of impact it can have on the market. So I'm going to give an example on the rate. This is not me quoting rates, okay? Just an example. If today's average market rate is 7.5, which it is, by the way, it's actually 7.61. Uh, that's the national average, um, not ours necessarily. So I'm not giving an APR here. You want to rate, call me. Um, anyways, uh, so let's say we have a 7.5. We're buying a $200,000 house, okay? So what's going to happen is in year one, your interest rate is going to be 5.5. In year two, your interest rate is going to be six and a half and year three it returns to whatever the market rate was when you did your loan application you locked in on this temporary buy down so it really is buying you time for the market to correct so you can get into a refinance situation for your long-term financing okay so that's how that's going to work and the cost associated well let's let's talk about the monthly amount so in year one right at a five and a half rate it, the principal and interest portion is going to be 1136 compared to 1399 all right so that's what a uh, a $263 monthly savings and then year 2 is 1265 which is a $134 monthly saving versus the 7 and a half of 1399 uh this expense actually isn't that bad so again like i mentioned you're going to ask the seller to cover that expense. It's going to be on the temporary buy down and it's going to cost the seller $4,764. So uh, it's not a bad way to go. And it could be the difference between you being able to afford that home at that price point and not affording, right? Uh, in regards to you wanting to jump in the market. Now, when we do your approval, we have to base it off the, today's market rate of seven and a half. Okay. So just an FYI, we have to be able to qualify uh, at today's rate, but your payment is going to be significantly lower, a couple hundred bucks, and that might help you get into that price point in regards to affordability you feel uh, or comfortability level, should I say. Um, so what's causing some of these problems here? I want to talk about the cost of waiting also. So that was a quick savings tip, right? Uh, you can also refer to one of our past videos using GemCap in regards to decreasing the amount of interest you pay over the life of your loan. Uh, we can toss that into the comments section on this video so you can refer back to it and check that out. I think that is another great, um, I'm not going to say monthly expense cost cutting, but long term in regards to what you're paying is significantly less in interest. So I, I highly recommend you guys take a peek of that. Um, but let's talk about the cost of waiting. So, you know, I hear a lot of people talk, saying, hey, I'm waiting for a crash, waiting for a crash, or hey, I'm waiting for a race to drop, um, waiting for this, waiting for that, whatever it is, okay? The reason I want to talk about cost of waiting is because over the last week and a half, two weeks, the rates have gotten even worse. Uh, the costs associated with the rates have gotten even worse, uh, specifically in the conventional world. Okay. You can also refer back to uh, loan level pricing adjustments, our a video we did a long time ago on why conventional financing sucks so much at the moment in regards to their pricing. Um, so, so cost of waiting. Okay. 
So let's say you got a 740 credit score right now. You're buying a $200,000 house. You have a 40% debt ratio. Those three things, okay? A couple of weeks ago, you were probably being able to lock your rate in, I don't know, between 6, 8, 7, 5, 7, and 8, we'll say. So let's say it's 7% flat, okay? Your total estimated payment would have been, now this is with your principal and interest, okay? This is also with your PMI in there doing a 5% down payment. So it's a $10,000 down payment, okay? Your principal and interest and your PMI total was thirteen forty one. dollars So let's go to today. So I'm using national averages, okay? I'm not quoting rates. So I'm just using a 7.625 national average on the conventional pricing. Your principal and interest portion is thirteen forty four. Your PMI went up because your debt ratio went up a little bit because of that higher rate. And so now your total estimated payment is $1,423. And that is an $82 difference per month times that by 30 years, you are spending $29,520 extra on that same house. And that's a two week time frame. Okay. Two weeks ago, this thing was $30,000 less expensive over the life of the loan. That is absurd, absurd. And so that's a big reason why people were talking about waiting, right? Uh, well, let's talk about that. So let's say you decided you wanted to rent for two years and uh, I'm going to play nice and say your rent's only a thousand bucks a month, which we know in this market, it's significantly higher than that. It's absurd also. Uh, so you're going to spend $24,000 over the next two years renting, building zero equity whatsoever. So let's say you decided to buy today, okay? Over this lifespan on this loan, again, I'm just using easy numbers. Let's say your house payment is 1500 bucks, okay? Something like that. Uh, with your down payment of ten grand, which would be 5%. Again, there's a ton of other loan options out there. I'm just trying to use a nice, easy 5% down conventional loan. Over that two-year period of time on this house, with your down payment included, you're going to spend $46,000. But you also have, five. we'll assume, 5% annual appreciation, which is conservative at the moment. All right, If you're looking at the market, 5% annual appreciation is conservative. So your house that you bought for $200,000 uh, in two years is now worth $220,500. You are going to have $34,000 in equity on a $46,000 spend, all right, on owning a home if you buy it today instead of waiting in two years. So two years from now, you're going to have $34,000 in equity on a $46,000 out-of-pocket spend. So let's say you're renting, you waited that two years, you go buy that same house. That same house is now worth $220,500. So now your down payment went up by a grand. So you have a $11,000 down payment plus the $24,000 in rent that you spent over the last two years. You're going to spend $35,000 buying this home two years later, but you're only going to have $11,000 in equity because that's your down payment amount and that's it. Okay. That's the cost of waiting. There are a lot of other examples out there when it talks about rates, it talks about appreciation in the market, it talks about rent spends. Uh, that's just an, an example I came up with. It's not going to be easy for you to follow, especially listen, listening on a podcast. But I just wanted to give that example, guys. It's um, it's not free. Waiting can cost you money, uh, and it can cost you, uh, well, not only time, right? But it's going to cost you equity, a lot of equity, all right? So get in now, refinance it later. We will be in a refinance market in the next 18 to 24 months, at least, we hope. Knock on wood. Uh, other things that are causing some problems in the market that not many people are talking about on affordability, uh, property tax increases are absurd. So I was just reading an article, um, Butler County. So Butler County said that they're going to have, they're expecting a 42% tax assessment increase on their property taxes. So this stuff is not new. This stuff has been going up crazy amounts since 2020. Ever since the COVID, the pandemic hit and these valuations have been going up exponentially, this is having a massive impact on clientele. I have a great example of it. I'm not going to bring it in because it's, it's a current client that was concerned. They got some escrow analysis done uh, from our loan servicer and their, their escrow payment went up a ridiculous amount. And it was between their taxes and the other thing I wanted to talk about, their homeowner's insurance. Guys, We've got to shop this, okay? I love, uh, I always recommend using who you're familiar with, uh, who you've been working with for a long time, but the cost of insurance has gone up so much, um, and I've had an insurance agent on here in the past as well. You can refer to that video. We have two videos on that, and it's just going up because the cost of construction is going up, the appreciation on these homes and the, the, 
the rebuild values or the current valuations of the homes on, on coverage amounts, all of it is factoring in to nothing but increases. So with these increases in the cost of everything, anytime there's a claim being made, the claim is being is more expensive than it was the prior year. Paying these contractors and these supplies are so expensive. So so you're getting an exponential increase in your homeowner's insurance costs as well. Hell, some carriers aren't even taking new clients. That's how bad it's getting on the insurance side. So guys, I do recommend that you shop it around. All right, get the best price um, for your money here, the best bang for your buck. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit. I have a ton of other money savings tips, but we're going to be running out of time. I want to keep this short and sweet. Make sure you guys pay attention to this whole video uh, so you can share it with your friends. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us this week. Remember, uh, make sure to tune in next week. We got some great updates on Fannie Mae and some guideline changes that they're doing on multifamily homes for owner-occupied borrowers. Uh, make sure, guys, check out YouTube and subscribe and check us out on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and we will see you guys next week.